Hello and welcome YouTube to yet another build highlight video of mine. Today I'm gonna show you my current battle mage. Um, before we start showing off the build, I wanna tell you that the build as it is currently is kind of a, well, <laughs> an experiment, a beam build. And um, maybe I'm gonna change it around. Also, take notice that if you want to like play a good battle mage, I suggest you to rather just play a full Creek set character, for example, like Creek set without mind warp, or Thirdian scepter is definitely much better than this. Um, that said, that's still like a fun build, and it was still like able to do like at least all main campaign content, even Kalokar, and some other stuff. So it's not necessarily like a bad build, but. Be warned that you should not invest into this build unless you like want to play something like super off meta and just like have fun. So don't ex expect to like too much like performance out of this actually. Also, I'm gonna put like another link down below for like my Space Gorge uh, battle mage that I also made shortly before this one. Um, I didn't like I didn't like it that much, um, but it has probably like a little bit better for performance than the current version actually. But it was just pretty boring for me to play, and also like spam blade arc, knocking back enemies, it's kinda, I don't know, wasn't that great for me to play it. But yeah, for now, let's check out this character here. I believe I won't have to put like any link down below for like a Creek battle mage, because those should be pretty easy to find at like all other place. I know that Malagant did one, I don't know, Wolf Overclock did one on YouTube as well. Uh, other people have done some as well, um, the forum has at least one of them as well, like dual wield variants or like one hand with a, sword, with a shield. Um, they're like all over the place, like it won't be hard for you guys to find a Creek battle mage right if you want like a, an action or good battle mage. But yeah, let's start talking about this world. So this is a battle mage focused around the Bone Lance ability. This is basically the Bone Lance battle mage. And uh, this is what it looks like. Um, bone Lance is the... Um, granted skill by the mythical decree of the circle of five and so yeah we're gonna talk about the gear later um, first of all let's talk about the skills as always and keep in mind that bonus is basically our spam ability so you won't find too many like um, active skills actually here in the mastery so we are a soldier and an anarchist and from the soldier we just have like the blitz um, as like our movement ability, right? Like one pointer here, one pointer here. Then we have War Cry for damage reduction and break morale maxed out because we are a physical build. That is a physical battle mage. And all runs rage as our exclusive. And also scars of battle, decorate soldier, veterancy, military conditioning, and fighting spirit. So you can see I just changed around all runs rage and fighting spirit. I'm like toying around a little bit like which is better to overcap and like or we have to like both at soft cap instead. Um, I don't know, like for this character I feel like actually like having Fighting Spirit as like a one-pointer only and maxing out everyone's rage is usually better overall. Um, I also needed to like pull two points with Scars of Battle, but we're still at like basically 100% armor absorption even with 5 out of 8 here. So this is like fine, you can play this either with 7 out of 10 Scars of Battle, 12 out of 10 Fighting Spirit and 12 out of 12 everyone's rage. Or like this, like 5 out of 8 here, 1 point here, and 19 out of 12 other ones rage. It doesn't really matter that much. and um, But I feel like this should be a little bit better actually for this specific build. Generally though, I don't really like overcapping other ones rage that much. Like it's most of the time not worth it, but here we have like so many points to like play around with, so um, that's fine here. Let's move on to the Arcanist side. Arcanist we are also using mostly for um, pair serves, but also for some debuff skills and also one second like uh, main ability actually. So let's start off with the Iskandros Antle Exchange, it's just a one pointer here, um, 17 points of the overload, pretty nice um, for the OA and Aether resistance, and then soft cap to elemental balance for the crit damage mostly. Um, 7 out of 12 into Mirror of Eroctus, 7 out of 12 is like a sweet spot um, to, like you get 2% um, cooldown reduction up to 7 points, right, and then you gain like 1 second cooldown reduction up to 12 points, so Mirror has like basically 2 um, value or like sweet spots where you should have it at, either at 7 out of 12 or at 12 out of 12, or just like as a 1 pointer, you don't need it that often. 
Um, but yeah, I like 7 out of 12 a lot. Um, yeah, it's great. Maven Sphere of Protection, I mean, there's literally no downside to this anymore at all, so just max it out. No, and uh, Conversion, it's really great for like all the CC resistance. <clears throat> this again has two different sweet spots, either at 6 out of 9, uh, 6 out of 10, or at 9 out of 10. Um, yeah. You should have that at least to like 6 out of 10 on probably any Arcanist, and if you have like more points and well, you can like make use of out of the additional CC resistance. You could also put this in nine out of ten. Um, Kedar's Tempest as a one pointer with the transmitter and also Inferno. This is basically on this variant of the build. This is only here to reset um, your cooldowns from your other abilities via time dilation. So that's like the time dilation proker. And also the burn damage from Inferno is full internal trauma damage, so it's not too bad to like one point this either. Um, I will maybe do like another damage over time variant of this build where I will like probably focus less on Devastation but more on Inferno. Um, but I will probably do that at a later point and try to like do other masteries first, like other classes first. Also, this character actually uses Olex with Flash Freeze. Um, usually I would not use this, but OFF has, uh, on Absolute Zero, it has 40% Fizz Resistance reduction, right? And also because of the content of the Arcan Whispers that I'm using here, which also gives me 30% Freeze Resistance reduction. Um, I can actually freeze some enemies, or like some more than before at least. It's still nowhere near perfect, but I mean, it adds to the flavor of the build, I guess. 12 out of 12 in the focus for like 12% offensive ability. Um, we are not a magic damage dealer, we are a physical damage dealer, so like, um, yeah, spirit dump and hard capping in a focus would not really be worth it on this build, in my opinion. So, yeah, just a soft cap here. Uh, one pointer into Arcane Will, um, one pointer into Nullification. Um, it's pretty nice to soft cap Nullification though. Um, this could be like an easy change as well, just like put for example 4, four points out of overload or like 3 points from conversion and put them into nullification here as well. Nullification is a great spell, so it's never really like wrong to soft cap this either. I would probably never over cap it, but soft cap is really really strong or like a 1 pointer like I have right now. And mental alacrity, 10 out of 10 here. This bone lance is casting speed based. And because of that, I do soft cap mental alacrity to like spam it faster and also to like reduce skill energy costs for it. And one point into fabric of reality, mostly for the like uh, racial damage to ethereals, aether corruptions, and chthonians. And last but not least, devastation, which um, also has like full elemental to physical conversion. And the build currently has like 83 aether to physical conversion, so this is almost full physical devastation without using Space Gorge set, um, and yeah, because of that I try to put this to like 21 out of 16 was like as high as possible as I can go with the build right now. Now let's also talk about the devotions that I chose for this specific build. Um, so it is a cast and speed based physical character, so Azraka does seem kinda juicy um, because of this node, giving you casting speed right? and also the proc here, which is like a very low cooldown proc that allows you to like spam an ability and also reduce enemy offensive ability. But that's pretty nice. Um, Shifting Sands overall is usually a little bit better for Pierce builds than for physical builds, so I don't like it that much, but it's still pretty nice. Um, I would probably not use this if I twist around the build to be more internal trauma based, but for right now I think that's actually great and works pretty nicely. Um, Assassin Blade is like a must-have, there's like no arguing about this one. And also Ghoul is kind of a must-have because we are a weapon damage based character with bone lance and Ghoulish Hunger is always probably the best defensive devotion for any like weapon damage based character that also uses either casting speed or attack speed. Um, then also like some other filler devotions for like attack speed like Jackal, right? Um, or Viper with offensive ability. Lizard for the HP and also to like, um, well, gain efficient 4 blue points here, 5 blue points from Eel, uh, 3 blue, 2 yellow from Panther, and the same for Stag. 
I wish I could go for Watcher instead of Stag, but then I wouldn't be able to like use Time Dilation and Azrak on the same build. Um, then of course I have Time Dilation, right? I talked about this earlier, to reset the cooldown of Devastation and Mirror of Eviractus, and also of Warcry. So that's pretty nice for this world actually. We are using this on Kaldir Stampus. I'm basically only using Kaldir Stampus whenever I want to like reset Time Dilation. And also I have Uzzah's Decree. Which I believe is pretty great for like pierce and physical builds as well, because of like the lot uh, the high amount of physical flat damage that you gain through the list as well. And Wolverine, like a filler DA devotion to like give me six purple, right? Um, also, using Wolverine means I don't really have to use Watcher that badly. Now I'm also gonna show you how to make these devotions and Grim tools, right, by your own. Um, so let's undo this so that you can recreate them yourself as well. And so first priority you want to go for is usually the Assassin's Mark, or like Assassin's Blade, I mean, and the Ghoul, right? And then you want to go for the Azraka while maybe taking Ulzad at the same time. And then, probably last but not least, you want to aim for the Time Dilation Devotion. So let's do that. So first of all, Assassin's Blade, right? You just put a one putter here, grab the Assassin's Blade. Um, if you're leveling a physical build like this, you can also choose to go for Falcon first, right? And especially when you're leveling with the two-hander, you should also try to go for the Kraken first, right? So, also we need the blues, so we take the yellow, right? And if you want to go for the Kraken, you can, like, choose any other green devotion. For example, Spider is really great now, actually, for the casting and attack speed. Helps you out with force wave leveling a lot, so... This is, for example, a standard, um, or, like, one of my standard early force wave devotions and I would probably like I would put this to force wave to so, like spam this with force wave. Um, this works great for early leveling. Um, to like transition over to the end game devotion though next up would be the ghoul even while leveling. Definitely go for the ghoul. I can also go for the jackal here already for the attack speed. And then you wanna get your purple devotions right. So now for example I would go for the Wolverine. Wolverine gives me, uh, like, puts me up to 12 purple, right? And now we can use the Ulda Devotion. And now for Azraka we need 6 yellow, right? So I was using the Panther and Stag, right? These two. You can also, at this point, you could also choose the Watcher instead of the Stag, actually. Um, but you would have to, like, go back to the stack anyway, so let's just go for the stack for now. And uh, we can also remove the yellow and the blue, like at some point in between here as well. You don't need seven yellows for Azraka. And now once you have completed Azraka, at least the proc, right? The moment you get the proc of Azraka, you want to switch over um, your force wave from Frag and Swoop to Azraka, right? And that means also you can, or like you should get rid of the Falcon, which doesn't quite work yet. Because you would have to like put a uh, purple one here, right? So yeah, before you get the shifting sounds, you have to like put a purple here, spec out of the falcon. But then like with the points from falcon, you can just use this and this, right? And uh, now you want to aim for the time dilation glass, right? So we need uh, more blues for that. The lizard, for example, is great for that. And now there is the problem where... Um, like, if you're using a two-hander while leveling, you can stop here and use this all the way, like, up to 94, for example. Uh, use this on Warcry. And this on, like, Force Wave, for example, or, I don't know, maybe Cadence, whatever you're leveling with, right? Um, but once you're not using a two-hander anymore, like in my case, at level 94, I switch over from a two-hander to a non-two-hander. You should take out the Kraken and also the Spider. Um, which doesn't quite work yet, actually, <laughs> because of Kraken, yeah, yeah. Let's take out the Kraken first, and then if you have the Kraken out, then you take the Spider out as well. And then with this, you use the Viper, and now you can use the Hourglass, right, instead of Kraken and the Spider. There you go, and then you put this to Kaido or Snappus, for example. And that's how you gain these devotions. Right. Next up, let's move on to the gear. We have the Mythical Decree of the Circle of the Five. This is the weapon which everybody, everything is centered around in this case, right, in this build. 
And this is the bonus ability. Spammable attack here. Uh, unfortunately, as I said before, it's not the best ability. In my opinion, the damage should be buffed a little bit. Um, but yeah, other than that, it, it is a fun ability. It's pretty nice. Um, maybe it's also like a little bit too narrow. Maybe it should be like a little bit wider. Like the projectile should have like a little bit like wider hitbox maybe. It would be great as well. But other than that, it's it's fun to play with and it's pretty, pretty nice. For the offhand, I actually went with the mythical Inashkor's head. Um, <laughs> this is widely considered to be a trash item. And I'm kinda happy that it found a place in this build. Like, I think it's actually pretty decent for this specific build. And I have not really found anything that's really better than this for now. Um, you could use like a shield, like, I mean, Space Gorge shield, right? But you would lose like plus one all skills to Soldier and Arcanist. And to be honest, um, the Circuit Breaker, like the proc, the Spectra Guard skill that this thing has, is kind of good. Like, it's it makes up for not having many here as well in the first place. Um, it's kind of like a mixture between ghoul and uh, a man here as well, like it, it's like a smaller ghoul and a smaller man here as well, but like tucked together and it also procs at 50%, so it procs even earlier, so it's pretty great actually. And uh, yeah, like this has worked out pretty nicely for this build so far. So yeah, in this specific case I think it's fine. On to the rings, um, I'm using the mythical ring of the black meteorarch here once to have like a physical resistance reduction proc. And also, I'm using the Coven Storm Seal, just because it's like a solid ring overall for any kind of soldier. And it's also really easy to cut, like you just have to target farm, or like you have to like vendor farm it from the Coven vendor, right? And uh, try to get like a 4% DA roll here, right? If you don't get a 4% DA roll here, um, just re-log out and log in again and talk to the, f uh, to the vendor again. It's like really easy to do, right? Like, I don't know, it's... Like, to get, like, at 4% the A-roll on this, you just have to, like, maybe, I don't know, log out 4, 5 to 10 times. Maybe only one time. Depends, like, how lucky you are, right? So it's really easy to get this ring. Um, alternatively, you could also use the, plate, the Blade Twister ring to have, like, even more physical and pierce resistance reduction. The problem with this thing, though, it is that it does mess with your elemental to physical conversion. Because this thing has elemental to pierce conversion, and because of that... Well, yeah, some of your mental will become pierce and not physical instead. It won't mess with your internal trauma damage, but it would, for example, mess with your damage on your devastation, right? So currently my devastation is like, uh, I don't know, 12.8 to 15.6 without any buffs up, right? And if you use this instead, it drops down and has some pierce now, which we don't scale as much, so... I was using this for like a long time, actually, and it's not bad, but yeah, it does mess up conversion. Which doesn't really matter that much for Bone Lens, as you can see, like, the damage for Bone Lens is still the same. Like, even better with this, actually, because Bone Lens does have Pierce damage as well. And this scaling Pierce damage on top of the physical is pretty okay. It also just doesn't have, by default, Elemental damage, it is physical and Aether damage. So it doesn't mess with the conversion from Bone Lens. Overall, though, for this build, I believe that Coven Storm Seal is better than Blade Twister. And, yeah, that's why I'm using it now. Next up we got the amulet, right? The Conduit of the Arcane Whispers. I was already talking about this a little bit. This is just here to, like, well... Go full meme, I guess? Actually? <laughs> no, it's not to go full meme. In this case, it's not too bad. It does allow you for, like, internal trauma, flash freeze, to do some stuff, and also have you... Um, they give you another 45% physical resistance reduction on an ability. I mean, Battle Mage overall lacks resistance reduction a lot. Like, you don't have a single minus X percent resistance reduction skill on Battle Mage. You only have, like, flat resistance reduction from the uh, Break Morale from Warcry, right? Other than that, there is no RR whatsoever on a Battle Mage, which is, like, also the main weakness of a Battle Mage, to be honest. But it is pretty nice with this. Like, I know this won't work against, like, bosses where it would really matter. But at least you're, like, faster at clearing trash and, like, clearing elites and, like... I mean, hero mobs, right? The star mobs. And uh, so some of the purple bosses you can actually freeze with this because of the freeze resistance interaction. But yeah, it's not as good as, for example, Mage Slayer's freeze RR. And 
I mean, those could also be buffed, like, maybe to 35 or 40% freeze resistance reduction. It wouldn't, like, break anything here. Now for the ham, this is the only remaining piece of the Space Gorge set that I'm still using. I'm using it for the elemental to physical de damage conversion, I'm using it for, like, devastation skill recharge and skill energy cost reduction to devastation. If I was not playing, like, around devastation as well, I would probably not be using the ham, it was something else instead, maybe, like, Octavius. Or maybe a Ravager ham, actually. Um, so yeah, which I would like change around whenever I would change around this character to be more like internal trauma focused instead of flat physical focused. For the chest, I actually went with Mythical Divine Seal Holberg because this world has like an open chest slot now and um, I don't need more elemental to physical conversion, right? I have 44% here. 47% here, and this helmet, all these three items together give me 100% elemental to physical conversion already. So there's no need for like a Targo chest or a um, Octavius chest, right? You don't need to use those. And there are like two very good standalone chests in the game. One is um, Fate Weaver's mantle, right? And the other one is actually Divine Steel Hoberg. Divine Steel Hoberg is also craftable, so it's a little bit more beginner friendly usually. <clears throat> and um, on top of that, this one got buffed on the last patch, and now this one gives you. And if you have like good rolls, then it gives you like 10% physical resistance or even more. This one only gives me 9%, which is kind of unfortunate, but it's still fine. Um, yeah, I also like wanted to test out this item, and it's not too bad now actually. It's definitely better than before. For the pants, these are the choices of Barbaros. Well, we are using Oleron's Rage as our exclusive ability, right? And also, Bat the Cry giving you 150% all damage proc and 10% total speed is already really good as well. And usually also you use these to have like better offensive and defensive ability, especially offensive ability. Um, I'm kind of out of good Barbaros pants actually because these are so, so good that I use them on so many builds. And you, I had some that had like up to 150 offensive ability. This one only has 150 no way. Well, yeah. At some point you're like running out of the good items, of the go out of the good rolls, but it's still a Barbaros pant and it's still pretty nice. A relic, the Serenity relic, plus one all skills, defensive proc. Always a solid choice on hardcore, especially on any character. Like maybe for example Doom relic or Eternity relic, those can be good as well. Or like uh, more CDR on Eternity Relic, for example. Since we are using an offhand now, Eternity would work here with this uh, setup. Um, those are alternatives, but yeah, Serenity is always just solid. For the belt, I'm using Mythical Reforged Chains of Oleron. Plus one soldier, physical damage. Overall, one of the best physical damage soldier belts, if not the best. Unless you need like Vitality Conversion from Gladiators, right? Um, which we don't in this case, so yeah. Everyone's chains are just the best here. For the meta, we have a Soldier's Rylock Crest of Attack. <laughs> this is a double magic pre and suffix metal, so really, really easy to get. Not anything amazing here, not at all. Um, you can use some other purple relic instead, like Bear Claw or um, Karatsuor, for example, those are fine as well. I like this one here because, like, Soldiers actually rolled plus 2 military conditioning, which is not bad. Um, and I off attack also helped me fix my OA problem with this build actually had. Like, this build had a pretty high, uh, or like pretty big OA problem before some gear changes like this metal or like Barbaros pants. Right? For the boots, we are using Thunderstruck Stoneplate Greaves of Ruin. These might seem like fantasy boots for some of you, but I mean, they have like a Grab prefix and a magic suffix, so that they're not like too hard to get. I mean, yeah, you still probably have to like craft lots of boots to get exactly these. But on the other hand, you don't have to have exactly these. There are lots of other boots that also work. Lots of like lots of purple boots. I mean, Storm Titan always works, for example. Um, so yeah, they are like fitting pretty nicely here. But you don't have to have exactly these. Mythical Sand Reaver bracers. Um, I mean, yeah. Casting speed, right? Proc, a lot of sounds, pretty nice. Um, because, mainly because of the proc and also because I'm not using Blade Arc anymore on this character because I'm not using Space Gorge. These are better than the 
um, Grass of Unchained might, right? If you're, if you're like playing ba Blade Arc with Battle Mage instead, you definitely want to use Unchained Might instead of these. Now the shoulders, <laughs> again, Vigorous of Vitality is not the best. This is just like HP and HP, um, which is decent, but you can definitely get the versions of this. Um, I'm just using this for the conversion, and I do have like some of these with like better prior suffixes, but um, they don't have this uh, like high amount of aether to physical conversion done. Also, yeah, 36% would be the max, and with that you would have like 86% aether to physical conversion on a setup like this. Because of Double Seal of Might, that also converts like 25% Aether to Physical each. Um, alternatively, you can use, for example, anything else with like Verse Aether to Physical Conversion. You don't have to like go for max conversion rolls on these. And instead, use this build called Legionnaire's Triumph, which would actually give you 100% Aether to Physical Conversion. This is another setup I still have to try. And uh, it's probably just as good or even better than what I'm using right now. I would lose like plus one all skills to soldier though, and I would have to like try to make up for that. Also the granted skill of the spell is useless, because we're not using a shield. Um, but yeah, just for like the full conversion it might be worth it to switch over to this bird instead. Alright, let's check out the build on action, right? This is how good it's gonna be, right? Alright, first of all, let me show you like a dummy kill time. Spoiler, it's not gonna be too good. Let's start at 30 seconds here. So yeah, 46 seconds basically, um, you know, like the best one I ever had was like 45 seconds, so it's not gonna be any better than that, um, which is like no surprise also because like this ability unfortunately doesn't have the highest damage as I said, and also devastation is kinda bad against dummies, right? Alright, as I'm strolling through the bog here on my usual farming route for the Agnum Blooms, I also pay the croc when I visit here for a while. Uh, you saw Prismatic Rage and also Spectral Guard activated here. Um, the great thing about the offhand is that, well, it procs at 50%, right? So it overlaps with the proc from Prismatic Diamond. And also it lasts for, I don't know, like 10 seconds actually, right? Which is a huge amount of time. And like kill lots of bosses in 10 seconds. And uh, yeah, it's like pretty great actually. Let's also check out the Ancient Grove on this character, right? I'm actually a void marked. That's kind of yikes. Minus 20% casting speed is a uh, pretty terrible for a like this.
Also another really annoying thing about Lone Dance in my opinion is that um, it like it has a huge range, right? But if you have your cursor here, it will actually stop where your cursor is at, right? Why does it do that? I don't know. It's really terrible though, and it should be changed. We gotta get the and the crab here, right? Where's the crab? Hello, crab. What's it like here like a second ago? Okay, we got some of these guys. This can be interesting. I didn't know you were running so much as well, Green Crab. Seers of Alacrity. Alright. At least he wasn't running this time. Alright, Gargoyle, here we go. Yeah, you gotta kite the sky a little bit <laughs> once he spawns his volcanoes, right? Don't stand on top of them. Don't do that. There we go. Let's also pay those stun from the visit. The new tomb of the heretic. I mean, yeah, that's how like close speed is not the fastest on this character as you can see. <laughs> but oh well. Superior for alacrity. Well, that doesn't sound too terrible, right? This is like a physical blade arc weapon, right? Hmm. Alright, the gates have been opened. Alright, this dungeon only really has four places of interest, right? Number one would be the Magi's, number two, um, the Death Room, number three, the Vendor, and number four, the final boss himself, right? Also, at least we don't have the attacks, I mean the casting speed, um, debuff this time, right? So we should have an easier time on this dungeon overall. We do, except for bleed, we have the resistances to sustain through these guys' uh, resistance reduction, right? 
So there is not really any need for us to disengage once they do like their blue aura. If you have less than around 35% overcap to resistances though, you do have to disengage once they do like their blue aura and you get hit by it. Because, yeah, it will reduce your resistances by like 35% and uh, that can hurt quite a bit. Alright, let's see if we can actually take on all these guys together in the middle. I mean, the build is kinda tanky, but we don't have that much DPS, so we'll see, we'll see. Yeah. The signs of hunger, or of famine actually, are common. Do we have any arcane in here? I don't see shit. I don't think so. Proc the or uh, offhand, right? And also prismatic rage. You can always use like a mirror in between. Just make sure to like cure your reset after your mirror and not before your mirror. Otherwise, you will have like a very long downtime on it. And yeah, there we go. I mean, not the fastest, but the actually kind of smooth clearance of this death room, I would say. Alright, on to Morgnath himself. So we did not summon Sephiroth, so we don't have to like, worry about the ghost too much. But he is gonna reduce damage, right? So <laughs> this might take a while. Reducing my already non existent damage to even less. Rock the offhand actually. Now, it's not that this fight is like taking so long, we do have to worry about the ghost a bit. Try to like kill him with the pierce through from the bone lands, right? I mean, we might not have the proc from the. Oh, actually, it's... he summoned Zephyrus this time though. Interesting. Should kinda make sure to kill this guy ASAP. Oh, well, that's. yeah, that's fine like this, right? Dodge the rocks though, they deal like lots of physical damage. And yeah, there we go. I mean, <laughs> again, definitely not the fastest, but the build can do it, and uh, I mean, we still had two circuit breakers that didn't even proc, like Ghoul didn't proc, and also Serenity didn't proc. So, uh, the build has more safety features than needed actually in those case. Last but not least, let's also try to kill Lokar. This character is pretty nice to like rush through any. any um, enemies like this, if you don't want to like farm the dark one set, I guess. Which you probably should, like, whenever you go through here. Yeah. Alright, let's try to kill Lokar without any potions, any ointments. Here we go. He has a hammer, Monka. Overall, this fight might take a while, right? There we go, offhand procced. Once the offense proc is out, using the Mirror of the Reptiles and also resetting. And actually, we have Ghoul proc, right? So, we should continue fighting during the Ghoul proc, actually. Okay, okay. 
It's not uh, looking that great, but it's still fine, right? Rockmaster Master Renty as well, that's like a little bit too early. We still have some measures of defense. Yeah, him like proccing my ghoul when I was disengaging and then proccing Serenity after that. It was kinda mockers. But the the build still is like tank enough as long as you like play around your cooldowns correctly. Um <laughs> But overall, this is not the best build, as I said before. It's not the best local killer, it's not the best killer at anything actually. It is pretty tanky though overall, and it's quite fun and it's actually quite nice to like, uh, make a build around this weapon this often in the first place. That's already, like, kind of an achievement for me, for myself. It's, I'm kind of happy with that already. I do feel like they have to buff damage from this uh, Bone Dance ability. That would be nice. It would also be nice if the Freeze Resistance reduction from this Conlet would be buffed to maybe 35 or 40 percent. And, uh, yeah, that's th those are, like, the main concerns actually I have about the build right now. Um, I would try some other setups later, like internal trauma setups, maybe that's gonna be better overall for a battle mage. Um, but yeah, until then, enjoy this version of the build, or like a Space Scourge battle mage, or a Krieg battle mage. Um, battle mage might not be the best class overall, but it's certainly really tanky, and it's also actually rather forgiving for a beginner, I would say, because you do have like another panic button here. You're using a shield or a two-hander, you also have many as well. You can make a battle mage really, really tanky. It's apparently also pretty good for like deep pushing an SR. If you like not play this version. <laughs> because it's like so tanky. I mean you could even use battle mage as one of your first classes, or like your beginner class as well. Um, because you can transition into Creek set as well. Or just like play two hand force wave. Uh, there are lots of possibilities with Battle Mage. They might not all be the best, but they're rather defensive. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this meme bonus Battle Mage. And yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much everybody for watching my meme bonus Battle Mage video. Uh, if you like this video, consider giving me a like or a subscription as well. And I hope to see you around on the next video as well.